Hong Kong. Back when mega projects like the Bird's Nest were a mere glint in China's eye, this was the original poster child for construction in Asia. But don't let the bamboo scaffolding fool you, this tiny territory has long punched above its weight. Generations of engineers and architects have cut their teeth here, with landmark buildings like the HSBC and Bank of China Towers. The city also boasts the MTR, one of the best public transport systems in the world. And it's just got even better. The new multi-billion dollar shut-in to Central Link will transform transport in Hong Kong, from its outer reaches to its neon heart. It's fast, efficient, and has the kind of fan following that would turn the London Underground green with envy. But it hasn't exactly gone to plan. The constructions had to contend with extreme weather and a deadly pandemic, and that seems to have been the easy bit. The building of this line gave rise to one of the biggest construction scandals in living memory, an episode which has shaken Hong Kong's building industry to its reinforced concrete core. So how was this remarkable new railway built, and how did it nearly go so very wrong? To get a sense of how important this new line is, we're going to have to start with a quick geography lesson. Hong Kong is made up of Hong Kong Island, Kowloon Peninsula and the New Territories, as well as a couple of hundred sparsely populated islands. Now, here's the problem. Hong Kong Island is the territory's main business hub. So how do you get people who live here and here to and from work every day with this in the way? Well, you could take one of the road tunnels, catch one of the high-frequency MTR trains, or if you're feeling wistful, take a trip on the Trusty Star Ferry, an icon of Hong Kong since it first opened back in 1888. Simple, easy, efficient. Ah. Historically in Hong Kong, uh, railway has been the, the backbone of the transportation network in Hong Kong. We do have the daily patronage, excess of 4 million people. For a city that's about 7.7 .7 million people. To keep up with demand, the Sha Tin to Central Link was devised, a massive $10 billion railway which would transform transport across Kowloon and the New Territories, and provide a much needed additional link to Hong Kong Island. Phase 1 would join two existing rail lines to create the new Twen Ma Line. This would provide a new east-west link across the new territories on what would be the MTR's longest line. But Phase 2 would extend the east rail line from Kowloon across Victoria Harbour and create the much-needed fourth rail link to Hong Kong Island. Let's just say people were pretty excited about it. Don't worry, we'll come back to that later. It was the Cross Harbour extension that saw some of the biggest engineering challenges of this whole project. For starters, how do you build a tunnel across one of the most iconic harbours in the world? As the railway had to connect to Hung Hom, an existing station on the north side of the crossing, a tunnel solution was needed that would be shallow enough to avoid trains diving sharply under the harbour like a roller coaster. Instead of drilling through the bedrock, the team opted for an immersed tube tunnel. Having the immersed tube tunnel methodology, it does give us that flexibility to ensure we meet the railway alignment to connect the Hong Kong station to the landing point on the Hong Kong island. Here's how it works. A trench is dug out of the seabed and prefabricated sections of tunnel are towed out at sea level. These tunnel sections are then sunk, fitted together and covered over with excavated earth. Once the whole thing's watertight, water is pumped out, and bang, you've got an underwater railway. The 11 tunnel sections were created here at the site of a former quarry. Around 160 metres long, 9 metres tall and 20 metres wide, each of the units weighed an incredible 23,000 tonnes. Once constructed, the quarry was flooded and the tunnels were towed to the north side of the island. Meanwhile, a specially constructed gravel spreader was preparing the seabed to ensure it was stable enough to take the enormous weight of the new tunnel. Before the immersed tube units are placed into its final position, we have to have a, have a gravel bed. This gravel spreader was able to use a computerized system so that it can not only 
place the gravel, but also have the gravel to the right thickness and the right level before the final units are put in place. This machine also replaced dangerous work previously carried out by divers who would manually check the thickness of the gravel bed. As if all of this weren't complicated enough, the construction also had to contend with a tropical storm. The transportation of the precast unit from Sheko uh, Casting Basin to Victoria Harbour, that would take about one week. Um, during one of the units where it was transported, uh, one of the typhoons came quite quickly. But fortunately, the unit was able to, you know, we had moored it in a, quite a shelter area called Junk Bay. After the units were lowered into place, a hydraulic jack was used to slide them together. A gasket created a watertight seal, and the remaining water was pumped out. From here, it was over to Athena and Jurner, the project's two tunnel boring machines, to create the two-kilometre-long tunnel to the East Rail Line's new terminal at Admiralty Station. That is, of course, two kilometres through one of the most densely built areas on the planet. After the tunnel had managed to squeeze its way through this, it then somehow had to plug into a station that was so busy it had become meme-worthy, without disrupting any services to the three other lines that were all in active service. Historically, Admiralty Station had originally two lines going in there with the Chinwan Line and Island Line. But then we had the, in, in 2016, we also commissioned the South Island Line. Part of that work under the South Island Line project had created the space required for the Saturn Central Link platforms, you know, which we built over the last few years. And that work um, in, involved underpinning the existing uh, stack tunnel of the island line over a length of about approximately 60 meters. The earth beneath these platforms was divided into two series of columns. Earth was excavated and reinforcements installed in an alternating sequence. In total, 650,000 tonnes of rock was removed and replaced with 5,000 tonnes of steel beams and supports. And this is the result. A giant station linking East Rail with three other lines. So, another triumph for Hong Kong. Cue adoring crowds and congratulations all round. Well, not quite. In 2018, during the construction of Hong Hom Station, a whistleblower scandal erupted, which cast a shadow over the whole thing. Everything started when Jason Poon, a subcontractor working on the site, went public with what he saw as a number of dangerous safety standards being breached. The accusation centred around work on the station platform. Poon alleged that construction workers were not properly installing the steel bars or rebar which connected the structure of the platform to the station wall. Instead of screwing the rebar into couplers which joined the two sections together, workers were cutting the rebar so it only appeared that they were connected. Once the structure was filled with concrete to create the platform, this could have created an unstable structure, which could potentially collapse with devastating consequences. In July of that year, as news of the allegations spread, the Hong Kong government launched an inquiry led by retired judge Michael Hartman, and what they found was pretty bad. An inspection in April 2019 revealed that out of 191 steel bars which were excavated for investigation, 39 were too short. And it didn't stop there. As the investigation widened, they discovered paperwork was missing for the northern tunnel approach, and there were further examples of unauthorised work, such as changes to the design of the rebar structure at Hong Hom Station. The inquiry concluded that while no direct orders were given by MTR to cut corners, it was ultimately responsible for signing off all work, as was the Hong Kong government. Frank Chan, the Hong Kong Secretary for Transport and Housing, and Jacob Cam, CEO of MTR Corporation, both publicly apologised for the scandal, with Chan promising an internal review to prevent something like this ever happening again. During the Commission of Inquiry at that stage, uh, MTR did a lot of review ourselves. And what we recognised was when there's certain parts of the work which was not done according to the code and standards, then we took the initiative to do the remedial works. And so we really took the initiative to make sure that there's no questions left before the station was commissioned. 
After remedial works were carried out to reinforce the station, the judge declared it fit for purpose and safe to open. As it stands, we respect all the uh, findings and recommendations and the inquiry, and we have taken those on board as well to uh, go forward before our next uh, set of projects. As shocking as this scandal was, it doesn't seem to have damaged public enthusiasm for the new rail line. Yes, what you're seeing is correct. The steady growth of the MTR has nurtured a new wave of train enthusiasts in Hong Kong's youth. As the expanding rail network provides connectivity to towns in further flung corners of the city, its grateful new passengers are all too happy to celebrate it. The West Island Line and also the Shutting Central Link connecting different types of uh, different uh, towns in Hong Kong. These type of uh, new projects and new lines making so many teenagers showing their interests on railway. So they always show their love by sharing their, uh, their photos, their videos on the internet. One community of fans created a virtual version of the entire MTR network in Minecraft, while others have taken to song to show their excitement for the shot in to Central Link. Another fan, Jason Law, scored a viral hit with his song I'm Really Excited About the Opening of Twen Ma, which quickly became a meme. His tune got so big it was given the showbiz treatment and even became the official anthem of the opening of the Cross Harbour extension. When the East Rail Line extension opened for service on the 15th of May 2022, thousands of eager fans turned up to try and get a place on the first train at 5.30am. The earliest arrived at around 8 p.m. on the 14th of, the, of May. That is one day before the opening. It is quite crazy, yeah. It may be two years late and nearly $1.5 billion over budget, but it looks like the Sha Tin to Central Link has the seal of approval. And its diehard fans have set a new bar for the openings of infrastructure mega projects. I do have a lot of um, sentiments behind this line because crossing harbour and when I was young living in the territories and having to take the train and then the ferry to cross harbour now that I can do it so efficiently. But I think really it's for the community and for the people who are involved in engineering and construction, they can feel good about it. Hong Kong Island has got the new harbour crossing it so badly needed. And a banging new song it never knew it wanted. If you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M.